Hi again everyone, it's Natalie. Welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can follow my art journey through 2021. Thanks in advance, it really helps me out. Leave me a comment down below if you have any feedback or suggestions for me. For this video I'm going to try doing the voiceover without a script just to see how that feels. This video is me painting a sketch of some succulents that I did last week. I really like just sitting in front of the TV in the evening sometimes and just sketching something out ready to start inking the next day. I decided to do some succulents because I realised that they're a very varied kind of plant with a lot of different colours and shapes and textures involved. Painting this piece was a really good colour matching exercise as it required a lot of observation of the subject matter as I was going along. For example, the particular plant I'm working on right now on screen had lots of fuchsias in it but it also had tinges of jade green on some of the leaves and it was really interesting trying to get some of the deeper colours on the lower leaves to look right. I don't really aim for a one-to-one -one look with the reference material and what I'm putting down on the page. I'm more looking to try to make the art materials that I'm using look the best they can. So while I matched the colours as well as I could, it was more about trying to get the general feel of the plant rather than a one-to-one -one match for the exact tones used. I definitely learned a lot while doing the orchid practice painting that I posted previously and I took a lot of what I learned from that forward into this picture where I intentionally used areas where the paint dries and leaves a hard edge to sort of form the initial outline for each of the leaves. You're about to see a jump cut here and that's basically me waiting until the previous ink has dried so that I can then start to do the next leaf alongside one of them. You should be able to see on the bottom and right hand leaves that I've already done that there's a very obvious sort of darker edge to them now and that's because I've sort of guided the dark pigments to the edge of each one of them and then left them to dry. One of the main things I've been trying to work on recently is making the things I do more multi-tonal so even where my eye looks at something and immediately kind of registers say a whole petal as or, or leaf as being one particular colour generally I'm trying to then look more closely and see if there's any other colours that are in there that I could drop in and just allow them to be even just a little bit visible if that's what my eye is able to catch. I'm really pleased with how this first plant went because it's got some colours I don't really use very often, such as the deep pinky fuchsias and the purples, but it also has some jade green on some of the darker petals as well, which I think is about to go in on this particular one. There we go. And that was not something that I really knew how it was going to react putting it directly alongside the purple, but actually when I was mixing, I was finding that putting the magenta alongside some jade green and mixing it was creating a really nice deep purple so I sort of had an inkling that it was going to work out all right. I really love the effect that ink has when you put dark pigments alongside lighter ones so as you can see on some of the dried leaves on this there's some really nice feathering going on from the dark purple which was something that I noticed happened when I did the swatch video and wanted to use in a picture like this. Painting these succulents has taken a really long time so far, they're not the fastest thing to do, for sure. I think so far this footage is clocking in, playing at four times speed at about sort of 50 minutes or so. And I think by the end of this video I'm only about halfway done with the picture in total, so there'll definitely be a part two to this. One thing that occurred to me while I've been doing these succulents is that I haven't actually got on very well with doing things like mandalas in the past. They're very repetitive and geometric and they're not something that I find very easy to continue to focus on. I sort of like quite a lot of variety in things that I'm doing. 
but doing these top-down succulents is almost the same thing in a, in a very real way. It's kind of nature's mandalas that I'm doing here. So it's really nice to find something that I still sort of feel connects me to that whole concept of sort of sacred geometry in nature. I'm just going to take the opportunity to chat about a couple of other things I've been doing recently. Watercolour paints are not something that I've had a lot of success with in the past, but I've always felt like I really want to figure them out to at least a basic extent so that I'm producing things that I'm happy with. The drive to do this comes from a couple of things. The first thing is that they were the favourite medium of my late mother. She tried a very wide variety of materials across her lifetime. Things like oil paints, uh, oil pastels and chalk pastels, acrylics, uh, pastry art, belting and just general mixed media stuff. But after she started taking some watercolour classes, those were what she became the most prolific in. The other reason is that I've really enjoyed watching a lot of other YouTubers play around with handmade watercolour sets that they've bought from people on Etsy. And I just really like the way that that sort of connects different artists with each other in a very physical way. Plus the presentation of the handmade paints is often really cute. So really I've been trying to reach that point with watercolour paints where I feel that it wouldn't be a waste of my time to actually get some sort of individual handmade colours at some point. I'm really pleased to say that I had a bit of a breakthrough last weekend when I tried to paint a chaffinch study. It was the first time where I managed to do a wash and let it dry and then come back and put in a lot of detail over the top. I think it really helped that I chose a bird as the subject matter because that's something that I've done a lot in the past with inks and I really felt confident with. I do find backgrounds quite hard to do still but I found that with bird photos they tend to have the bird as the in focus thing that's very sharp at the front of the picture and then the background is fuzzy enough that really you can get away with just doing some big splotches of colour in a wash in the background. So I tried that on the picture that I did at the weekend and it actually turned out quite well. I've actually started another watercolour study off camera as well which is of a mantis shrimp which I really love because they're just so vibrant with pretty much every colour in the rainbow in the same creature. If that goes well I'll probably start doing some watercolour paint videos as well as the ink videos. In this video I'm again using the Dr Martin's Bombay inks and the watercolour paints that I've been using to practice with recently are Mugello Mission Gold watercolours. In the past I've only ever used Windsor and Newton Cotman pan sets which I'll admit I never felt super keen on, but I also never really had the awareness to know that maybe I should try something else. Having watched a lot of other YouTubers play with lots of different types of watercolour paint, I decided to try out Mugello Mission Gold paints. I'm not completely certain, but from watching a lot of videos, I think that they are probably around sort of like a mid-range to upper mid-range set. This is my first experience with tube paints and I really enjoyed squeezing them all out into a custom palette so that I had that experience of creating the palette myself. I feel a lot more connected to the paints because of this and I really enjoy the look of them in the palette. I feel like that's really helped to encourage me to keep trying and persevering with them. On screen you'll see that I've just started to apply some thin white lines of ink to the edges of the leaves that I'm working on. This was something I decided to try out because the leaves I was observing had like a very thin rim of white on the edge. I actually liked the effect so much that I take it forward throughout the rest of this piece to try to help delineate where each leaf ends and to help draw the eye to where the separation is. One of the other main things I'm trying to work on at the moment is making areas that are darker really dark to stand out and make it obvious where there is light and where there's shadow. As for the plants I do in this video, I think I enjoyed the large purple one at the start the most um, with the sage green one that I'll do next, probably the second favourite. 
The one in the bottom right that's quite bright green ended up being quite challenging because of all the structure that was present. So I think I may have finished some of that off camera just so that I could just focus and not worry about how long it was taking me to get it right. I think that's everything I wanted to cover for this video, so please enjoy the rest of the footage and I'll speak to you soon.
she's waiting.